Hey everybody, this is Pete, and this is going to be the first video in a short series of videos covering what I learned at Autodesk University 2022. It was fantastic to be in person again. I really loved that, and I got to learn several things in the classes that I attended. And I'm going to kick it off with the, the one of the first classes I attended was from my colleague, Curtis Wagespack. And his class was MFG 501293, which was iLogic 25 Tips and Tricks to Boost the Octane in Your Inventor Automation. And it was a fantastic class. A lot of the stuff I, I had learned or I'd already known, but there were several things that I'd learned. Some of them are going to be too long probably for a video, but there were a couple of trips uh, Sorry, it was a trip. There are a couple of tips that I took away that I think are going to be crazy useful. So that's what I'm going to kick off with today. I'll also uh, show the name of the class in the description. I don't think the links are up yet, at least the public links. So uh, I'll just put that, the name of the class in the description. And if uh, that comes out soon, I'll, I'll add the link as well. So his class had to do with iLogic, of course. And it, depending on what your knowledge level of iLogic is, he had lots of tips from mostly beginning type stuff all the way to some pretty advanced things. So it was a great class. But the two things I want to latch on to today are within the rule editor itself. So you can see that I've got <clears throat> just a simple block here that's by design. And I've got a rule in here that is linking the values of the part to some assembly level parameters with the same name. So extremely simple, nothing to it. This is by design. <clears throat> but if we replace this part, and I have already built out a block here, and I replace it with this block, everything's cool. If we take a look at this block really quickly, and I would never do this in real life, but this is to highlight what's going on. Somebody said, well, we have to put the name of the block at the, at the parameters. And also the name of the block is here. Now, before anybody goes crazy on me, also I would have renamed this in the browser so that this wouldn't be an issue. But since I didn't, or maybe I, I, I don't want to for whatever reason, the block name also has a 4310 in it. So this, of course, would screw up my rule, because if we take a look at the rule text, it's got the original name and the original parameter name here. So this is where it gets really interesting. He learned this from another colleague of ours, uh, <clears throat> uh, Scott Hallmark. But if you hold down the control key and click, you can actually edit several spots at once. So I'm going to left click at the back side of the block name and also at the back side of the parameters and I would add in that text that I need which is underscore 4310. So if I save that and run it, oh, I'll see update it. <laughs> I didn't add my automatic update but that's okay. You see that the block actually changed. So that was really neat because now if I have to change just stupid text in a few different spots, that holding down the control key and clicking in every spot works great. It can be in other lines too, as you saw, it could be in separate lines. It can even be in separate spots within the same row. So really fantastic tip. The other one is if we look at the user parameters, I'm used to grabbing these values and then I'm looking to see what the value is. But if you right click on the parameter itself, you can capture the current state. I'd done this before with geometry, but never had thought to try it with the parameter. And what it does is it pulls down the parameter, of course, but it also grabs the current value. So if you're ever asking yourself, well, what's the current value? Or you're afraid that you're going to mistype something from up here, just right click on it and capture that current state just like you might do with some geometry if you're trying to automate dimensioning within a drawing, which he covers that in the class as well. So again, no, nothing earth shattering, but just a couple of really uh, quick tips that I found particularly useful, and I hope you do as well. So uh, yeah, please check out his class. It was a fantastic class. He did a great job. 
If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.